Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time not yet subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that to get notified all my upcoming brand new videos. In our earlier two videos, we have seen overview of the flywheel and the use of the turning moment diagram in the design of the flywheel, energy stored in your flywheel and all the concepts that are required to design a flywheel. In this video, we are going to solve a numerical problem on flywheel design. So let's get started. At least from the student's point of view, flywheel problems can be classified under two broad types based on the nature of the power input and the power output. If we have fluctuating power input and require constant power output, that kind of a problem can be classified as category one. On the other hand, if the power input is constant, whereas the required power output is a fluctuating one, we term as category two, right? Further, the first category can be classified under three types. After all, in the first category, predominantly, the turning moment diagram will be given. If we know directly the area above and below the mean torque line, we call that as a first problem under category one. Sometimes the turning moment diagram will not be given in terms of areas directly. Instead, they will be giving you the description of the problem by using which we can construct the turning moment diagram. I call that as a type two problem. Finally, you know the turning moment diagram is after all a curve, which can be described by a mathematical equation. If the turning moment diagram is described by a mathematical equation, we can call that type of problem as type three problem. Please mind you, though these are three different types, essentially using the turning moment diagram, we are going to determine maximum fluctuation of energy. Therefore, in principle, the methodology remains same. The fourth type known as punching press and riveting machine related flywheel problems, where we have electric motor having a constant power input whereas the output power required would be highly fluctuating. In this case, we may not be given directly the turning moment diagram. Instead, the related data will be given in other form. So this requires slightly a different approach. So these are the four different types of problems. Is that clear for you? Yes. What we are going to do in this lecture video is we are going to solve only type one problem. Shall we proceed? Yes. Before proceeding, let us have a quick recap on all the prerequisite concepts that are required to solve this particular problem. You know that turning moment diagram will be given for the design of the flywheel by using which first we have to determine the T mean value. Then we have to find maximum fluctuation of energy delta E. How to find T mean? T mean into cycle crank angle equal to area of the turning moment diagram by using which T mean can be determined. Delta E formula, you know that maximum energy minus minimum energy. And some equation we have derived. More importantly, the delta E is equal to I omega square Cs or equal to Mk square omega square Cs using that equation we can find mass or radius of gyration or coefficient of fluctuation of speed based on the given data of a particular problem, right? So using these relations, we could very well determine the dimensions of the flywheel rim, namely diameter of the flywheel rim and the area of cross section of the flywheel rim. So these are the key concepts that we are going to apply while solving this problem, right? Right, shall we solve a numerical problem directly? Yes, we are going to solve two problems, okay? This is the first problem. A steam engine runs at 150 RPM. So they have given speed N. 
its turning moment diagram gave the following area measurements in millimeter square taken in order above and below the mean torque line 500 mm square minus 250 mm square right 270 mm square minus 390 plus 190 minus 340 plus 270 minus 250 so turning moment diagram areas are directly given the scale of the turning moment is given 1 mm equal to 500 newton meter this is in y axis 1 mm equal to 5 degree crank angle this is in x axis so they have given the scale for the turning moment diagram if the fluctuation of speed is not to exceed plus or minus 1.5% of the mean they have given speed here 1.5 above 1.5 below the mean torque line so total fluctuation of speed is given as 3% is that clear then what we need to determine we need to find mass of the flywheel which we denote by small letter m i hope the given data is very straightforward right there you are these are the given data we need to determine mass of the flywheel okay since they are given n we can very well determine angular speed of the flywheel okay when they are given turning moment area is millimeter square so we need to convert that into a unit of a work done for that they have given turning moment diagram scale is given One mm square on turning moment diagram is equal to 500 multiplied by. Can I directly multiply a degree? No. We need to convert them into equivalent radians. So therefore, I could get one mm square. I am getting 43.63 newton meter. Okay. Right. So as you are aware, whenever turning moment diagram is given, what is the meaning? We need to find delta e. Am I right? For my conceptual understanding, let me draw the turning moment diagram. Need not to be the scale. Right? Yes. Now. let me draw a t mean line so cycle ends here right now above below the mean torque line areas are given conceptually i am going to draw the diagram 500 above mean torque line or below mean torque line uh, you know unless otherwise uh, mention this is plus 500 mm square above mean torque line so i will be drawing roughly some area above minus 250 below plus 250 270 above minus 390 below 190 above minus 340 below then 270 above then 250 below exactly let me write them there two five zero right. So we are going to find delta E. How to find delta E? We know that delta E is equal to maximum energy minus minimum energy. Is it it? Yes. As we have already discussed in the theory, the maximum energy and the minimum energy will be at the intersection points of both T cow and T mean line. So what we are going to do now? we are going to find energy at all intersection points is it clear uh, let us give name for those intersection points i is nothing but a again why the same turning moment curve is going to be repeated again and again in order to find uh, minimum and maximum energy values let me draw a table we will start from point a 
at point A, there is some energy. So let us assume at point A, energy is E. Okay. Now what about energy at point B? Energy at A plus this 500. At point C, the energy at point B minus 250. So I could write here E plus T is the energy at C. Can you understand me? Yes. Same way, how can I find energy at D? Energy at C plus 270. So this becomes E plus 520. Same way I can find at other points. We have completed the table, right? After completing the table, you could very well check here. What should be the energy at the end of the cycle? This must be equal to the energy at the beginning of the cycle, which is nothing but E. Now, we have to find at what points energy will be minimum and maximum. Can you see from this table where energy is minimum and maximum? How can I find? Assume E is 0, some number. In that case, E minus 20 is my minimum energy. Clear? E plus 520 is my maximum energy. So maximum energy at point D, minimum energy at point G. So we got maximum energy and minimum energy value. Right? Excellent. Now we can find delta E easily. Maximum energy, which is nothing but E plus 520 minus minimum energy E minus 0. So 540 mm square is the delta E. This is in millimeter square. I want to convert into the energy units. Already we found 1 mm square is equal to 43.63 Newton meter. Therefore, now I can write delta E is equal to 540. Instead of mm square, I am putting the scale. So by calculation, I am getting 23,560 meter. There you are. So we got the delta E value. Is that clear? Excellent. Once we obtain the delta E value, we can very well find the mass of the flywheel. We know that delta E is equal to mk square omega square cs. Am I right? Yes. We know delta E. K is given. Omega we have found already. Cs given. So I could easily find the unknown by substituting all the known values. Okay? Yes. This is the mass of the flywheel for the given problem. That's it. That is the end of the problem number one. Let us try to solve one more problem. In addition to the mass of the flywheel, sometimes we will be asked to determine dimensions of flywheel rim. So let us solve one problem on calculations of dimensions of flywheel rim. Okay. A steam engine which runs at 150 rpm, N is given. Turning moment diagram is given in terms of area above, below, meet or line are given and also scale of the turning moment are given. What is that? They are given as the data so that we need to find delta E. The fluctuation of speed is given plus or minus 1.5%. So total fluctuation is 3%. So we need to determine mass of the flywheel. Here K not given, radius of gyration not given in this problem. Okay, next. 
determine suitable diameter of the flywheel rim and the cross section of the flywheel rim width and thickness assuming axial dimension is equal to 1.5 times radial dimension let me explain you a bit later hoop stress is given here this is sigma then density of the material is given which is nothing but rho okay so these are the given data there you are rpm given c is given hoop stress sigma is given then rho given okay let us understand the flywheel rim first so in this flywheel as you could see the shaded area is nothing but rim of the flywheel so if you take this as a axis you could see this dimension is what i call axial dimension this dimension is what i call radial dimension so for better understanding let us cross check the flywheel we will be getting rectangular cross sectional area so if this is my width b i call it as a axial dimension this is what i call t radial dimension that is what given in the problem they said axial dimension is equal to 1.5 times the radial dimension okay what are the things we need to find mass of the flywheel then diameter of the flywheel rim then width and the thickness of the flywheel problem clear for you yes so to start with since n is given we can find omega omega equal to 2 by 16 what i will do i have taken delta e from my previous problem why because data sets are same so i got the delta e okay first let us find mass of the flywheel we know that what are data is known delta e we have calculated mass we need to find k unknown omega and cs are known okay now please understand here when thickness of this flywheel is comparatively lesser than the radius of the flywheel we can take radius of gyration is equal to mean radius of the flywheel so substituting that we could very well write delta e is equal to m instead of k what can i put mean radius of the flywheel r square omega square cs am i right from this i can write v equal to r omega so i can write this formula can be written like this we know that hoop stress equal to rho v square so substitute the given data on simplification of this i am getting v value as 20 meter per second so now i can very well determine right this is the first answer mass of the flywheel okay right now let us find the mean diameter of the flywheel rim we know that v equal to r omega or r into what is the formula for omega 2 pi n by 60 or in other words i could write v equal to pi d n by 60 we just found this b how much that 20 pi diameter is what we need to find rpm is given divided by 60 from that there you are so d is equal to 2.546 meter now let us find the cross section of the flywheel okay when i do this cross section here we would be getting this diagram we know that mass density rho is equal to mass by volume how can i find the volume of the rim area of cross section 
multiply by the circumference, you will get volume of the ring. From this, I could write rho is equal to mass divided by area of cross section multiplied by what is the circumference? Pi d. I know rho, I know mass, I know diameter. Just now we found. From that, we can find area. Therefore, area of cross section is equal to B into T. But in this case, they have given breadth equal to 1.5 times thickness multiplied by T. This value is equal to 0, 3, 4, 1. From this, I could find thickness of flywheel rim. 0 0.1507 meter, which is nothing but 150.7 millimeter, isn't it? Once we know thickness, we can easily find width of flywheel rim because width is equal to 1.5 times thickness. So, substituting that 1.5 times 150.7 we will be getting this with 226 mm, okay? That's it. We have obtained the mass of the flywheel, diameter of the flywheel ring, and the cross-section of the flywheel ring. That's it. That's the end of the problem, okay? You can very well try this problem for practice at your home and check your answer, okay? What next? In our next video, we are going to solve one more interesting problem, which is nothing but type 2 problem, wherein turning moment diagram description will be given. Okay. Hope you understand this problem clearly. If so, like this video, share to your friends and subscribe this channel. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye.